guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Pixie Sticks or Kate, and this is Diamond Painting and Dr. Pepper. Speaking of Dr. Pepper, let's start this off strong. As you may have noticed, this is a diamond painting that isn't actually released yet. It's coming out this weekend. I have it because I'm the artist. Uh, this is actually the second artwork of mine that has been released this month. <laughs> so the first was Clementine that came out a few weeks ago. And then this one is Dino Roar and it is a cute little nine by nine, really snack size diamond painting. And I am excited to work on it today. Um, the pen that I'm using is this one and it's really cool. It's like a, a lava pen. Um, I don't actually know who the creator is of this pen because I got it secondhand from Katie. Um, so yeah, um, I'll have to ask her. If you hear any strange noises in the background, my dog is in my office with me and she is going crazy over the cat that is not in the office. <laughs> so I'm having to deal with that and I'm sorry if you hear her, I'll try to cut her out. Um, yeah, um, an interesting thing happened when I unboxed this diamond painting. I did film the unboxing. However, I ran into a small error where the um, sticker sheet and the canvas symbols don't actually match up, which is a first for me. I've never seen that happen before. But um, what I hear is that this kit will actually be discounted because of that and you'll be able to download the digital sticker sheet um, when you get the kit. So what I've done instead of kitting up with the stickers, the full stickers on my containers, I've just used the number um, that matches the numbers over here. I think it, yeah, it's called the serial number. And that way I won't get confused if I see a symbol that's different from the symbol on the canvas. I can just refer to the number and it's such a small kit that I should easily be able to just take a quick look at the legend over here on this side or over here on this side and figure out which symbol that color is. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Pull some of this back. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it this time. I think I'll just kind of follow the lines. Um, with these little snack sizes, it's really fun to just kind of do whatever you want because it's not big enough to really need any special sectioning or anything like that. Yeah, so I hope you guys have been doing well. I have been very busy, <laughs> so we'll get into some of that here, but let me go ahead and just pick a color to get started with, number nine, I think. And yeah. So it's been a while since I did an actual, like, proper whip and chat. Um, the last video I did, I think, was the unboxing of Clementine. And that was a little bit different because I, I finished the entire canvas before it was time for it to release. So I showed um, the canvas and talked about the release and everything for that one. Um, and this one, I don't quite have it done yet. I'm not sure if I'll have it done by the time it releases. If I do, I'll definitely try and show it, just so you guys can see. It's, I'm just not rushing it because I have a lot going on right now. Um, so recently, I took like a mini vacation to go down to California and um, meet up with Katie from Diamonds and Washi. And also I was able to use the time to meet some of my coworkers at Diamond Art Club who live in that area. And that was amazing because <laughs> I've been working there for two years now and I haven't ever met them in person. Um, and then when I got back, I'll talk a little bit more about the trip in a minute, but when I got back, I had some backed up work to do. So. <laughs> 
Um, I've been working on that a lot and trying to get caught up again. Because nobody else was on vacation while I was gone, so <laughs> stuff kept coming. And I just wasn't there to do my part of it. So yeah, California. Uh, I had been kind of keeping my eye open on um, tracking flight deals in case something came up that would be a great deal to go visit Katie in California because she had offered to let me stay with her, which would really help the cost of going down to visit because I wouldn't have to um, pay for a hotel room or anything. And um, there are also some other diamond painting friends down there that I wanted to meet up with if possible. And they all kind of live in a similar area. Um, Jade isn't super close, but close enough that she could drive in and see us. <laughs> so a deal came up in January and it was um, only $85 round trip for a flight from close to where I live to close to where Katie lives. And that was pretty crazy. Um, $85 is less than like, if my family goes out to eat <laughs> at a restaurant, we spend more than that. So um, I, I hopped on that deal and I'm gonna move this closer so you can see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, that was for um, February 9th through the 14th was gonna be when I was visiting. And it was with Spirit Airlines, which is kind of, it's a budget airline. And it was kind of funny because when it came time to um, like check in, I discovered that if I wanted to bring a carry-on, that was extra. Like I could bring one small bag that would fit by my feet and that would be free. But if I wanted to bring a carry-on luggage that could hold, you know, some clothes and other stuff, then I had to pay for that. And it was, I think, $75 each way. So the flight ended up being almost three times more expensive than it would have been if I didn't bring a carry-on bag <laughs> because it would have just been the 85. But I didn't want to have to limit... Um, space to bring like I wanted to bring a diamond painting to work on and I wanted to have enough room in there to bring back souvenirs for my family and I wanted to bring more than one shirt <laughs> so um so I paid the the fee to bring the carry-on and I think it was worth it even still because the flight was so cheap I, I still paid you know way less than $300 for a round trip flight. Um, it was like, it wasn't nonstop. It, it flew through Vegas. So, um, it was definitely a bit out of the way considering if you wanted to fly from Portland to, um, Southern California, it's only like a two and a half hour flight or something if you went straight shot. But for this flight, I had to fly, two hours from Portland to Vegas, and then another hour from Vegas to um, Southern California. So it wasn't that much more time in the air, but the fact that you had to, uh, you had to leave the plane every time you landed in Vegas, and then either get back on the same plane or go to a different gate and get on another plane. And then sometimes, you know, the the layovers, like the second layover I had on the way back was three and a half hours long. So I just sat in the airport for three and a half hours. So it was pretty tiring, but still worth it for the price. Like I think um, if I wanted to not deal with that kind of thing, then I would have to fork out, you know, more money for a straight shot flight, like nonstop flight. And um, yeah. I just didn't do that at the time. But yeah, so I got there pretty late on the 9th 
uh, it was after nine, I think. And, um, <laughs> I didn't know where to go. I'd never been to that airport in Orange County before. And so I didn't know exactly where to go. I just followed everyone else who was walking out. It was kind of dead because it was so late at night. Um, and instead of going out to the, like, departures, they went out to the arrivals area. And so Katie was calling me saying, I don't see you. <laughs> um, can you tell me what the number says on the columns around you? And I was like, I don't see any numbers. And she was like, you really couldn't miss them if you were in the right place. <laughs> so, um, obviously, I wasn't in the right place. But she found me eventually, <laughs> despite it all. And it was so amazing to see her in person because, you know, you can chat with someone and everything, but just being in the same space is not the same. It's um, really amazing to meet someone that you have, you know, grown a friendship with. Um, my husband and I met online, and so I've had that experience before where, like, you get to know somebody for a long time, and then you see them in person, and it just heightens everything, you know? It's like, this is real now. <laughs> Sounds dramatic, but I don't know. It's a special thing to me. Um, I remember when I was younger and the internet was just kind of getting off the ground and people were meeting other people from the internet and stranger danger. It was all very um, taboo to like, to get to know people and meet people outside of the internet who you had met on the internet was like dangerous and everybody was thinking you were crazy for doing it and and now these days it's just like it happens often because we've realized that the internet is just a place where you can meet like-minded people who just happen to live a lot further away from you so I'm, I very much appreciate it for that because Katie and I really have a lot in common and it's just, it's so easy to hang out with her and talk to her and you don't meet many people like that in your adult life. Like I feel like when I was a younger person, I had a lot easier time, you know, making friends that were easy to talk to and um, felt like I could, you know, tell them everything. And as an adult, it just gets harder and harder to do that. Like, you you understand that every time you tell people things about your life, that you're also burdening them with whatever drama you have going on or, um, or you're revealing things about yourself and your life that maybe you shouldn't tell every single person who you casually talk to just because it's private or... Um, the other people involved might not appreciate it, you know? So, I don't know. It's rare for me, especially, to um, meet someone who I feel like I can be open with in that way. So, yeah. Um, I have had a couple of friends like that online. And I've, I'm hoping I can meet more of them in the future. I don't know if I mentioned at the beginning of the year, but one of my goals was to try and um, be more independent with travel because there's lots of places that I want to go and um, trying to limit my travel to only being with my family makes it so that I'll never really feel comfortable visiting people I want to visit that nobody else in my family knows because they're my online friends. And if I waited till my family was ready to go to wherever the place was, um, then I'd have to try and figure out how to meet the people I want to meet while not inconveniencing the other people I was traveling with. I don't know if that makes sense, but that is what was going through my mind when I made this kind of resolution. I was like, well, it's a whole lot cheaper for one person to fly and stay in a hotel if needed and 
everything or even if I'm if I'm not staying in a hotel it's a lot easier for super nice people to <laughs> open their homes to one person than to many strangers in a family that they don't know you know <laughs> so I figured that traveling alone was something that I could kind of add to my repertoire of things I want to do more of and I had a great experience with this first bout of that. <laughs> um, it was definitely a lot less stressful to be the only one traveling. When I've traveled in the past with my family, you just have to kind of keep track of everybody and make it make sure everyone's happy and fed and knows where we're going and what we're doing and um, gets enough to gets enough sleep and just all that stuff and when it's just me I, there isn't any of that it's just I only have to worry about myself and my luggage and <laughs> things like that so um it's a lot less to keep track of and a lot quicker because yeah I can just go where I need to go and I'm there Anyway, so once I got down there, um, the next day, we didn't get to do much that first night other than diamond paint, which was really fun. But um, the second day was when I was able to meet my coworkers, um, Angie and Alex. Um, well, they're, they're the owners. And then my coworker, Jen, we all were able to meet for lunch in Century City, and that is the same place where the uh, Diamond Art Club pop-up was during the Christmas season. So we met at a restaurant in that same mall <laughs> where that was, and it was such a nice restaurant. It was called Javier's, so it was a Mexican restaurant, and it just had really pretty decor, and it was so amazing, <laughs> like I mentioned, to... Um, meet my bosses and my coworker after um, two years of working with them from afar. Just really amazing to be able to see them in person. And they're such generous, nice people. I, I was, of course, nervous to meet them in person because I am a socially awkward person. And I did manage to very much embarrass myself. <laughs> which I, I don't even know if I should repeat <laughs> my embarrassment here because it was kind of over the top. <laughs> but luckily they were very gracious and just laughed it off with me. And um, it was a good time. And then um, the day after that, we were fortunate enough, Katie and and I were fortunate enough to have been given free tickets to Disneyland and California Adventure from Christiane, who works at Disney. And, oh my gosh, that was so amazing. Um, in the past, when I've been to Disney, um, it's always been with my family. And I don't know if that I've ever gone without my dad, which was kind of weird. Oh, no, I have gone one time without my dad when I went with my mom and my sister. Um, but almost every time I've gone has been with at least one person who, um, I guess I'll just say, has a different vacationing style than I do. <laughs> um, and it's not a bad thing. My dad, especially, and my daughter, Sam, is just like this, too. Um, is very much, hey, we paid to be here. Let's make the most out of it. Let's go, go, go as fast as we can and see everything that we can and pack it all into the time we have. And I absolutely understand where he's coming from and totally respect that. But also, oh my gosh, I can't walk that fast. <laughs> my feet hurt. My, like, I get so tired so quick um, when it's crazy like that because... I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm an introvert and there's a lot going on. Like, um, 
at places like that. And if I'm also trying to be go, go, go and keep up with people, I get really overwhelmed. Um, and luckily this time it was completely a different vibe because Katie has the same kind of laid back, um, vacationing style <laughs> that I do. And, um, we kind of went in with this idea that we were going to go and we were going to you know, use the Genie Plus that came with the tickets, which was so awesome that it was included, um, and book Lightning Lanes whenever it made sense and just try to see what we could get done in the day but not really have hard and fast, like, needs for what we wanted to see and do. Um, and it was amazing. I think Katie even mentioned in her whip and chat the way it worked out was that the whole day we just, everything fell in line perfectly. We went from one thing to the next thing to the next thing like clockwork and we didn't have to rush. It just, it just fell at our feet and was perfect. And we got to do pretty much everything <laughs> that we had like wanted to do. Um, like if we were going to write down a list of everything we wanted to make sure we fit in, we got it all in there. So the first half of the day we spent at Disneyland and we met Dale, who Christiane is friends with. And Dale was so fun to interact with. I, I have to admit that I am very awkward in character situations because they can't talk for one thing and I feel like I need to match their energy um but I'm also awkward at it I don't know what to like say and do with my hands and um people are looking at us you know but um when I met Dale he kind of he led the way. <laughs> he made it easy for me to kind of just relax and enjoy the moment, which I really appreciated <laughs> because that was definitely the most magical character experience that I've ever had at Disney as far as I can remember. Um, I know I've been there when I was a child, so I might have had some other ones that I can't remember. But yeah, in my... Um, in my adult life or my even, you know, older teen life, I can't remember having an experience like that before. So I think Katie had posted some video from it on her Patreon. So that was, if you're a patron of Katie's, you might have seen it, but such a fun memory to have. And I'm so glad that we got to experience that. And then after that, um, we went right over to Pirates of the Caribbean. And while we were in line, Katie asked me, so are you one of those people who likes the smell of Pirates of the Caribbean? Because if you haven't ever been there, the, the water of the ride has a very particular smell. I don't know if it's the water or the air or the way they mix or what. Um, Katie thinks it's just because it's not very clean and that might be very very well true I'm not exactly sure what the smell is I just know that I love it and it is so nostalgic for me and I asked her I said okay but when was the first time that you experienced this smell were you a child and she said she was something like 21 when she first rode the Pirates of the Caribbean and I was like ah see that's probably why because I, as a child, just thought it was the way the ride smelled, you know? I figured it was part of the ambiance, and they put it in there on purpose. And as an adult, Katie probably knew that that smell was mm, most likely indicative of something that's hard to clean. So yeah, for me, it's this magical smell, and for people who experienced it later in life it's probably not quite so magical but yeah I feel like the smell wasn't as strong this time so I don't know if they did like a big clean or something like that 
Um, but it definitely was still there once we got further deep into the ride. And so I took a big whiff and I was like, ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was really satisfying. And then after we got off that ride, our lightning lane was ready for Big Thunder Mountain, which is actually my favorite ride at Disneyland. And I was so glad we were able to ride it because Katie had said when she had been there the week before with her husband and Christiane and Spencer, um, they kept trying to ride it and it kept like breaking down right as their lightning lane came up or something not breaking down but like closing for a short amount of time and um so they never ended up getting to ride it and I would have been sad if I had to miss my favorite ride so luckily I didn't we were able to make it onto that one and it was great and then from there we went right over to Star Wars land which I hadn't been to in Disneyland before because um, the most recent previous time that I had been to Disneyland was 12 years ago. <laughs> so it had been a while. <laughs> and uh, yeah, obviously that part was new. So we went on Smuggler's Run and it was funny because the the people we rode that ride with. If, if you haven't ever ridden Smuggler's Run, each person on the ride does a different job. So there's two pilots, two engineers, and two gunners. And we were the engineers this time. But the pilots was a, was a mom and daughter pair. And the daughter was not super old. I think she was probably like eight, I'm guessing. And... I don't know if they did it on purpose because they said they had, had ridden the ride before, so they were used to how it functioned. But, man, we crashed and burned so hard. And it was almost more fun that way because I've been on Smuggler's Run at Disney World with my whole family, so we kind of worked together pretty well and did, did a fair job. Um, but this time, the game actually, or the, the ride game I guess it's sort of a game ride it actually lets you fail so if you steer yourself into a wall you crash <laughs> and we did that several times and by the end we got this like awful score where it was talking to us like and it looks like you have no life support and all your shields are gone and all this stuff so it was a very rough ride because we kept crashing, but it was really fun. And then after that, we sprung for the extra, like, per person payment to be able to do the lightning lane for Rise of the Resistance, which neither of us had been on before. And I won't say much about it here, because if you've never been on it, I wouldn't want to spoil it for you. Uh, because it was literally one of the most amazing experiences on a ride that I had had in my life. And I'm sure a big part of that was the fact that I hadn't had any idea going into it what kind of ride it was or what happened in the ride or anything. And it was funny, we were riding next to two other women and... When the ride was over, one of them, the one I was sitting next to, turned to me and was like, was that your guys' first time? And I said yes, and she goes, I could tell. And then she said, I wish I could ride this ride for the first time again. It's just such an amazing experience for the first time. So I have to agree. It was so cool. So if you ever get the chance to ride that ride, I highly recommend it. And... It, you would do yourself a disservice if you looked it up first. So, um, yeah. Oh, man. Um, so, yeah. Then once we did that, we went over and hit the Matterhorn. And then we did our only full standby line for um, Space Mountain. So we, we waited in that line for, I think, over an hour. And then something weird happened when we got on. Like, we finally got on, 
And then for some reason, um, just after we got on, we moved forward like five feet and then they stopped us. And then some guy came over to the left of me with this big like stair step. And he was like motioning for me to get off the ride. And I'm like, what's going on? And I couldn't really understand what he was trying to tell me. I didn't know if I was supposed to get off or I don't know. I didn't know what was happening. And then one of the other ride workers um, told us to sit back down because I had started to get up. And um, they pushed us forward and off the track to a side track. Apparently there was something wrong with that car that we were in and they were going to switch us out. So we had to use the these like this they brought this wheeled staircase back over to um the side of the cart and we had to like climb out and go down this big staircase to get out of the ride and then like walk back behind in the cast area to get back around to the line so that we could put up be put on a different car it was really weird that's never happened to me before um but yeah so that was interesting. We had a great time on that ride too. I think that one's Katie's favorite. So mine is Big Thunder Mountain and hers is Space Mountain. And we got a great picture of both of us on the ride. And it was a good time. And then we got out of that just in time to go meet Christy Ann and Jade from Jade at Gem Shop over in um, downtown Disney for dinner. So, um, we went to a place called Tortilla Joe's, and I had flautas, and it was really good. Um, it did get very cold, because they sat us outside, and um, after we'd been eating for a while, we started to, like, shiver, because it, it was in the shade, and then it got a little bit windy, so... <laughs> Um, finally, eventually they brought out some big space heaters and then we were okay again. But yeah, for a while there, it was really uncomfortable, <laughs> but it was so nice to be able to hang out with the three of them at once, Jade, Christiane, and Katie, and just like all chat together and interact together because it definitely changes the vibe. The more... Um, people you add, the more personalities are interacting and it just, it was so much fun to chat with them. And I think I literally peed my pants laughing and had to go to the bathroom and like fix myself up because it was just, it was so funny, the stuff that they were saying and yeah. Um, so after dinner, Jade had to go home because unfortunately she was on blackout dates for Disney, so she couldn't like join us at the park. But Christiane was able to join us at California Adventure after dinner. And that was fun because Katie would not go on the um, Guardians of the Galaxy Tower with me. This is a ride that I had never been on because... Last time I was there, it was still Tower of Terror. And Tower of Terror was my favorite ride at California Adventure back when it was there. So I definitely wanted to ride Guardians of the Galaxy and see if it was worth getting rid of my favorite ride to change it into that one. And it was actually really good. I loved it a lot. Um, Christiane was a little bit nervous. <laughs> I think, because she was trying to grab onto my arm every time we were, like, dropping. But she couldn't because my arms were, like, up above my head because I was like, woo! <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was a great time. And Katie stayed outside and watched the dance-off um, that was going on with Gamora and Star-Lord outside. So I'm sorry I missed that part. Oh, and right before, right before we went on tower, the tower ride, um, Guardians of the Galaxy Tower, um, I was trying to keep up with Katie and Christiane as they were walking to it, and I got cut off from them by the way traffic was moving. So like people walked in front of me, and so I was trying to like 
weave around people and get back to where Christiane and Katie were. Did I say Jade before? Anyway, it was Christiane and Katie. And I was trying to get back to them. And somehow, I don't even know how this happened, because I was trying to step up on a curb. And I still, I, I play it back in my mind, and I still clearly see myself stepping onto the curb. But somehow I managed to trip and fall on my face in front of, like, many groups of people. And I, it was like one of those slow motion things where it's happening, and as it happens, like... My mind is going, is this really happening right now? Am I falling on my face in the middle of a bunch of people at California Adventure? Like, really? But yeah, I fell. I landed on my hands and knees. And um, I think I was uh, inadvertently um, omitting several curse words as that happened. <laughs> Because when I looked up, the people in groups around me were just looking down at me like, oh my God, what just happened? <laughs> and they asked if I was okay and stuff. Um, but yeah, I got up and then Katie and Christiane were like, I saw them looking around like, where did Kate go? And I'm like, my knee is all jacked up and I'm like limping over to them. And they're like, what happened? We couldn't find you. We were looking for you. And I was like, well, you had to look down. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was laughing so hard that I was crying after that because it's just, it's so ridiculous. Like that, that, that happened. <laughs> So anyway, we rode that ride, and then we went over to Radiator Springs, which is also something new for me. Uh, when I was there last, it was still a bug's life in that area. And Radiator Springs is so pretty, and especially we saw it at night, and everything was lit up, like um, Flo's Diner and um, just the street from Radiator Springs was all lit up. And it looked really cool. And then we um, we rode the Radiator Springs Racers ride as, like, a, we did the single rider line. So that was a first for me. I've never just, like, r ridden as a single rider. But it was fun. Um, that was another one I had never ridden and didn't know what to expect. And it was really cool um, because you, you end up, like racing another car from the ride so another set of riders you race them and I guess sometimes one car wins and sometimes the other car wins unfortunately mine lost but Christiane and Katie got to ride in the same car and their car won so at least at least some of our group won the race and then after that it was time for our Dessert. So we headed over to Pixar Pier and um, grabbed a very large cookie from Jack Jack's Num Nums. <laughs> and so, yeah, they're like, like oversized cupcake cookies almost. They're so big. But it's just a chocolate chip cookie and it's fresh and warm and you get some milk with it, you know, if you want. And... It's ooey gooey and delicious. And then Christiane had to go because she had worked since very early that morning. And Katie and I rode a couple more rides. We went on um, the Toy Story Midway Mania. And Katie beat me, but only by a little bit. And then we went on the Soaring Over... Well, it used to be Soarin' Over California, but now it's just, like, the same Soarin' ride that they have at Disney World. And that was a little disappointing, because I was excited to see the California one again, since it had been so long. But yeah, they don't do that one anymore. But it's still a great ride. I love it because um, you get to smell scents when you're on it, and I feel like that's just such a unique thing to that ride, and it makes it so much more... Um, immersive so yeah I love smelling the fresh cut grass when you're soaring over the safari in Africa and um all that stuff so yeah 
And then we went back to Katie's house. And the rest of the trip was a lot of diamond painting because the next day Jade came over to Katie's and so we got to diamond paint with her all day and chat and laugh and tell stories and it was a blast. Um, and then Monday is when the construction started at Katie's house. So things were a little bit crazy because not only was that going on, but one of her poor boys was sick that day. And so there was a, a whole lot happening. And so we kind of just took it easy that day so that we could be there for Connor and for the construction if, we, if you know, Katie was needed by them for anything. So yeah, we just took it easy. And then that night we were able to diamond paint a little bit. So that brings us to Tuesday, which was supposed to be the day I flew home. Also was Valentine's Day. Uh, spoiler alert, it didn't end up working out that way. My flight was supposed to leave at 4.20, so Katie and I got up somewhat early at like 8.30 and headed over to downtown Disney again because I was hoping to find some souvenirs for my family members that I hadn't been able to find souvenirs for when we were there at Disney on Saturday. So... Uh, we went to the world of Disney, and it was such a good time. That store is amazing. I found everything I needed, and probably more than I needed. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was really nice. And so yeah, we wandered downtown Disney a while, and then as we were leaving, I got a message, like an email from Spirit Airlines, saying, "Oh, your flight has been delayed." And it had been delayed by an hour. It'd be like 5.30. And I was like, okay, that's fine. That's still plenty of time for me to make it to my connecting flight in Vegas. Because I was originally going to have something like a two and a half hour layover. Um, and then this would make it a one and a half hour layover. So that was going to be fine. And so we got back to Katie's house. And then as we're hanging out there, I get another email saying, oh, now your flight has been delayed even longer and it's not supposed to leave till seven, which would have me landing in Vegas after my connecting flight would already be departing. <laughs> so obviously that wasn't gonna work. And they, the airline didn't do anything to like let me know what they were gonna do about it. Um, <laughs> So I had to call them and be like, hey, this doesn't work. What's up? <laughs> and as I was on the phone with them, um, they were trying to get me scheduled on a different flight. And then I got the message that my flight had just been straight up canceled. <laughs> so there was no way I was getting on the flight that day. I tried to see if they could get me on an earlier flight. So the flight that was supposed to leave at 2.43 p.m., the one that was supposed to leave before my 4.20 flight, had also been delayed. And it wasn't supposed to leave till 4.55. And at this point, it was like 3. And I was thinking, well, if I could get down to the airport and get on that flight, then I could easily make my connecting flight still. So can they get me on that flight? And as they're trying to help me, the lady's saying, yes, we can do that. And then she puts me on hold, and after a while she comes back and says, um, we're having troubles with our server, and I can't seem to put anything through right now. And I'm like, okay, I'll hold more if you are still trying. <laughs> so she put me on hold again, and Katie's husband, Adam, was nice enough to start driving me down towards the airport because our thought was, well, if, if she's able to get me on that flight like she's saying she's able to do, then I want to be there <laughs> so that I can make the flight. And it, it was, you know, probably about a half-hour drive. 
So we headed that way. I was still on hold on the phone. And then she finally gets back on the phone and says, I'm still having problems with our system. Uh, can I just call you back once I get that fixed? And I said, sure, that's fine. But can you confirm that you have my number so that I know you'll be able to call me back? And before she was able to do that, the line cut off. <laughs> so I was like, well, shoot. So as we're driving towards the airport, and I have no idea whether or not she's going to call me back, I'm trying to um, work with their app and try to get someone on the chat to see if they could set me up with the flight. And luckily, the lady called me back as about... 10 minutes later as we were driving before I'd had a chance to talk with the person on chat. And she said, okay, our system's back now and I can get you scheduled for that flight. And she gave me the flight number and the time. And I was like, yes, perfect. That's the one we talked about. So she goes through and schedules me and then she's like, okay, I have you scheduled for this flight at this time on February 15th. And I was like, wait, 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 that's tomorrow. And this whole time, we've been talking about getting on today's flight so I could go home and make my original connection in Vegas. And she's like, oh, yeah, no, that one's full. And if if you want me to try and find you a different one today, then I'll have to charge you because we've already rescheduled it once. And that's all our warranty covers. And I'm like, OK, but you rescheduled me to something I didn't agree to or want. <laughs> Anyway, so the only other flight it turns out that was available was still going to be the next day, and it was like 6.30 in the morning, and if you know me, you know that I am not awake at that time, and I definitely didn't want to force Katie to be awake at that time and take me to the airport that early in the morning, so we ended up just turning around and fighting the traffic to get back to Katie's house and I stayed an extra night and they were so gracious to host me another night after all of that. I felt so bad because I'd been imposing on them already for like five nights. <laughs> so, but um, it, it kind of worked out because Katie and I got to have a really nice relaxing diamond painting evening. I just dropped my pen. Uh, a really relaxing diamond painting evening where we listened to an audiobook and just chilled out and diamond painted and chatted. And then the next morning, we were able to go to a nice brunch, which we had said we wanted to do and hadn't had a chance to up till then. So we were able to go to brunch and then make it to the airport nice and early for my flight that was leaving at 2.43 p.m. And... Yeah, it, it worked out. I was able to get home that next day, but I really was pretty sad that I didn't get to go home that night because I was excited to see my family and my dogs. And I told my husband, if I can't call you and tell you what's going on because I'll cry. So I just had to text him. And, you know, they were fine without me, but I was just sad because I was excited to see them. Not that I was eager to leave Katie's, though, because I, I definitely was having a great time. I just um, got a little bit homesick there towards the end when I thought I was going to be going home and then didn't get to. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm home now. And really enjoyed my first solo vacation. And I'm hoping that I will get to do more things like that in the future. Um, one of my best friends from like high school is having a birthday this year. Um, I just had mine this past Monday and I turned 42, which is the meaning of life if you're a fan of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> and she is a fan of that and she's turning 42 in June. So she wants to kind of go all out and have a big party in Vegas and she invited me to go to Vegas for the party so I don't know we'll see if we can make that work I hope I can cuz Vegas would be really fun um, so I don't know we'll see do 
do you guys do a lot of traveling on your own? Or do you only travel like with family? My husband isn't a super huge fan of travel for travel's sake. Like he hates planes and if he's going somewhere, it's because it's gonna be somewhere relaxing <laughs> or really fun. Like he'll, he'll go on a Disney cruise or he'll go to Disney or Hawaii or something like that, which he keeps suggesting we go to Hawaii, but we never end up planning it. <laughs> so yeah, he, he wouldn't be interested in just like traveling around with me to meet people and stuff. So that's a me on my own kind of thing, which I don't really mind because it's kind of nice to just go somewhere by myself and be independent that way and kind of be able to just think about um, nothing but what I'm doing in the moment. So yeah, I don't know how long it has been since I started recording, but I hope you guys enjoyed the summary of my trip. And if you are interested in this cute little snack size kit that is coming out this weekend on Saturday, um, it's coming out at 9 a.m. for Diamond and Ruby members on Diamond Art Club's website and 9.30 for the general release. Those are Pacific times because I'm in Oregon. <laughs> so, yeah. It, I think it's going to be discounted slightly because of the error in the sticker sheet. So you could pick it up for a steal if you want a quick little project to do in between your larger projects. Or if you know someone who would like to get into diamond painting, this is a good starter kit. It's also good for kids um, if they're into dinosaurs. So yeah. Um, tune in this weekend if you're interested in that and thank you so much for hanging out with me for my whip and chat I hope you had fun and I will see you guys in the next one